I'm Northorn from the Fold Podcast Guild. This is Vainglory Analytics Video 6, Weapon Builds. Probably you've heard people talk about weapon builds. For example, there was a time when quite a lot of people were suggesting Double Tyrant's monocle on Vox. Here's Brad doing it, here's Xenotech, here's someone else. They're all giving advice on the best weapon power build for that hero. The question I want to look at today is not just Vox, but for any typical weapon power hero. What red item build does the most damage? As always, we got to get more specific about that question. It depends, of course, on several factors. Because some items increase your attack speed, we better talk about damage per second. And because some items have armor pierce, we better consider the question against different values of armor. And because some items give you critical hit potential, which is something that comes and goes randomly, we better consider a range of possible damages, depending on whether you get lucky or unlucky with your critical hits. And because some situations demand more defensive or utility items, we better consider builds of different sizes, maybe three red items or four or five. And I'm going to restrict our attention to tier three items because I'm trying to ask questions about maximum damage per second. And because I'm assuming that if you buy other stuff, you're working towards a tier three item. Okay, that's a lot of getting specific, but Let's talk first about armor. What armor values should we consider? Well, let's consider all the heroes in Vainglory, each of them at level 12, and consider the five different tier three armor situations they might be in. They might have no armor, or an Atlas pauldron, or an Aegis, or a fountain, or a metal jacket. Each of those things is a different value of armor. If we make a histogram of all their armor values, they come out like this. It looks like there's four major spikes. Uh, because Fountain and Aegis both give 30 armor, they make that second spike twice as high. So, it's no armor, Fountain and Aegis, Atlas, or Jacket. The analysis would be too long if we considered all four possibilities, so we're just going to take the two extremes. You can do more for homework if you want to. So let's start with the no armor case. We said that we wanted to talk about varying build sizes, so let's consider all the possibilities, from just one tier 3 weapon item all the way up to five of them. I'm going to assume that you want a slot for boots. So the first question is easy. Which one tier 3 weapon item does the most damage per second? We can cross off the two lifesteal items immediately, because their stats are lower in exchange for some lifesteal. Lifesteal is great, but it's not part of our analysis here. We just care about damage per second. But even that question needs to get more precise. For instance, bone saw and breaking point do more damage over time, but tension bow has a spike every 6 seconds. This is going to get tricky. In fact, the analysis would be really tedious to do by hand. Let's bust out some code. I spent a couple days writing some code in a popular stats software package called R. Here's a screenshot of some of the code in RStudio, a nice development environment for R. Anyway, what it does is it lets you run simulations that behave a lot like the actual game, like this. We'd write code that says, make a new simulation and add a hero. In this case, A stands for alpha, which I defined earlier, and some other code I'm not showing you. Add another hero, in this case Blackfeather, tell them to target one another with their basic attacks, give them some weapons, then let time pass for two seconds and see what happens. Here's what happens. Blackfeather hits Alpha, Alpha hits Blackfeather, but notice that Alpha's did a spike of damage because of her tension bow. Some time passes, Blackfeather hits again because he's got tornado trigger, so he hits sooner. But then Alpha and Blackfeather both hit each other at the same time, but notice Alpha's alternating current procs on that hit, plus her Serpent Mask lifesteal, but Blackfeather is now doing a bit more damage because he built one breaking point stack. His next hit does more because it happens to crit, and he has two breaking point stacks, but it doesn't matter because of the two second mark, Alpha kills him with some lifesteal to rub salt in the wound. So you get the idea. The computer is going to figure out all this stuff for us because that would be a real hassle for people to do one step at a time. Of course, it's important with something that complicated to check to see if simulations like this actually work, like do they actually match what happens in the actual game. In video number one, we checked to make sure that our damage formulas were correct, but there's a lot more going on here than just damage formulas. We got time passing and all sorts of stuff. So here is a video of a level 12 Ringo with a sorrow blade, tension bow, and two crucibles just to keep him alive a little longer, attacking another Ringo with a sorrow blade, a breaking point, and two crucibles. If we record exactly when he does damage, we get a table of values like this. If we simulate it with my software, we get these values. Okay, are those similar? Let's see. 
actually pretty much. Here's a graph of cumulative damage over time for each of the data. The discrepancy, which is small, probably has to do with the fact that I've got limited information about exactly how the minute details of each tick work on the server, and parts of my simulation are just educated guesses from like some forum posts I read, and you can't get precise that way. You could probably like reverse engineer it to work a little better, but I'm not going to do that. It's good enough. You can see it's pretty close. If we let the other Ringo attack instead and record his data, we get a really similar situation. You can see the simulation seems to record damage slightly lower and slower than the game does, but not by much. So the main takeaway here is that these simulations aren't bad, but they do seem to be underestimates. Anybody who wants to police my code and make it fit reality perfectly, let me know and I'll share it with you and you go right ahead. In fact, I already policed it a little bit myself, and I discovered this interesting tidbit. While Attention Bow says that every 6 seconds it gives you an extra 180 damage, that's not actually true. It really means it gives you 180 extra weapon power for the next hit, but that weapon power will get factored through your target's armor, not 180 true damage. So, at most 150, maybe as little as 45, depending on the enemy and their armor. Interesting tidbit. So... Anyway, the point is that we can set up now any situation and ask the computer what happens. Note that running the simulation does not take the amount of time that the real game does. The real game, if you want 10 seconds of data, you have to let the game run for 10 seconds. But in the simulation, it happens almost instantly. So we can simulate a lot of games really fast and take some averages, and you get the idea. There's a lot of potential here. So let's use it. Let's consider each of the remaining six Tier 3 weapon items. Let's give each one, one at a time, to a level 12 Kestrel, who has a pretty low base weapon power, and have her attack an unarmored level 12 Glaive, who has an average base armor. Then we'll do it again, but with the attacker being a level 12 Finn, who perhaps surprisingly has a pretty high base weapon power. Although, Finn doesn't respond well to increased attack speed, but the simulation actually isn't smart enough to take that into account, so it shouldn't matter. Here are the results. The number next to each item is its typical damage per second. Each simulation was run for 11.95 seconds to have exactly two tension bow procs occur and no more. Uh, also, each simulation was run 15 times and the damage per second averaged to minimize outliers from lucky or unlucky rolls of the critical hit dice. This is a bit unrealistic because the heroes are level 12, but a level 12 hero typically has more than one tier 3 weapon item but I wanted to be consistent and do the whole analysis through this whole video with the same level heroes to compare apples to apples. Okay, if we look at Finn as the attacker, the results are similar, uh, but note that these simulations assume the fight goes on for almost 12 seconds. Each hero was given, literally, 1 million health <laughs> so that we could have a long fight, even when there's high damage per second, and get a nice average damage per second over the 11.95 seconds without anybody dying. So, Breaking Point starts slow, but catches up and passes Sorrow Blade over the 12 seconds. But you might still want to buy a Sorrow Blade as your first item. In fact, we're going to come back to this Breaking Point issue later on. Let's see what happens with two items. It'll take too long to do the analysis for multiple types of attackers, so we're just going to focus on a Glaive versus a Glaive from now on. That's convenient, because not only is his armor average among all the heroes, but his base attack power is average among the heroes as well. I don't know about you, but these results surprise me. I would not have expected Breaking Point to be doing so well without something like a Sorrow Blade to support it. Maybe buying a Breaking Point sooner rather than later is better than I thought. But like I said, we'll come back to that. Also notice that I'm providing two numbers for each build now. Average damage per second and a standard deviation as well. If you haven't had a stats class in a while, that's a measure of how volatile the numbers are. In other words, if the standard deviation is low, like zero, then the damage per second is really predictable. In that third build, the Breaking Point and Sorrow Blade don't have any randomness in them at all. 0% crit chance, so you know exactly how much damage per second you're getting. But in the top build, the Tornado Trigger gives you some crit chance, which might show up a lot or a little in a fight, you never know. So there's some unpredictability in the damage per second there, and the standard deviation measures how much unpredictability. Higher numbers mean more chances to be lucky or unlucky. How about three items? If you think you might only get three Tier 3 weapon items, which happens in a lot of games. Here's what they should be. Breaking point and two tornado triggers. Obviously that's an excellent cruel build, for example. Definitely build the breaking point first because the crit in the tornado triggers won't do much good until you have some base damage for the crit to multiply. Note that all simulations I ran assumed no stutter stepping, which is very relevant here. With two tornado triggers, it's hard to get a lot of value out of stutter stepping. So that 
725 damage per second may be pretty realistic. But for some of the other builds, if you can stutter step, you can up the damage output by 10 or 20%. That's not enough to make a no tornado trigger build catch up to the top choice, but it's worth noting. Now, what do these standard deviation numbers actually mean in practice? Well, if you want to see the exact histogram of damage per second and how likely it is, here it is for that top build, just as an example. Uh, this is not the precise distribution, it's a sample from the 15 simulations I ran. So you can expect some times in which a second goes by and you do only 625 damage in that second, other times we might do as much as 850. It varies, as you can see. Now, when we start to look at lists for four items, you may start to wonder what you're supposed to do with this, like memorize this information? No, what we want to do is take these lists and see if there's a reasonable path of purchases leading up to the top four item build or five item build, but going through other high damage per second builds along the way. So we'll come back to that soon too. But first notice that with two monocles and a tornado trigger, the standard deviation has dropped to zero again. And it's not because there's no crit anymore, it's because there's a 100% crit chance. There's no unpredictability anymore. You crit every time. Finally, here are the results for five items. Now we can go back to that previous question. What's a reasonable path for working up to that top build? If that's the best weapon build, how do we get there in a way that's valuable even when we haven't got to those five items yet? Surprisingly enough, the top build leads to the top build in every case, items one through five. If you start with a breaking point, then do two tornado triggers, a monocle, and a bone saw, you are the top build every step of the way. It's probably easier to read and remember this way. But all those simulations were run against an enemy with no armor, other than, of course, the base armor that every hero has. So now let's consider the opposite extreme. What if the target has a metal jacket? Well, our weapon power damage per second obviously drops, but let's quickly see what the results are. Here they are for one item, two items, three items, four items, and five items. Now, those went by really fast, so you can go back and rewind, pause, whatever, if you want to. But what's fascinating here is that while some of the non-top-related builds have changed, the top build is the same. How convenient! Also, notice that Bonesaw would be slightly higher rated if we were considering the damage from your teammates as well, but this analysis just considers 1v1 fights. So, as a weapon power hero, I'm going to be trying this build path out, but wait a second. I said we needed to come back and talk about breaking point a little bit. Isn't it a little odd that there's no sorrow blade in there at all? Why is breaking point so strong as to be the thing you're supposed to buy first? That kind of goes against the conventional wisdom. Did our simulation do something wrong? No, it's not necessarily the simulation. I think it's one of our assumptions. All the simulations were supposed to go for 11.95 seconds. Now that's good because it spreads out the extra damage from Tension Bow over time, and it helps us to have more opportunity for random crits to come and go to get rid of outliers, but that's a long fight. 12 seconds of constant hitting means your breaking point is going to get really important. So we should consider some short fights too. All right, I reran the whole analysis for five second fights. I'll give you the results really quickly this time, just the top few builds in each case. Against enemies with no armor, we have this ranking on the left for single items and on the right for pairs of items. This is looking a little more like we expect. But when we get up to three items, like on the left here, we can see a monocle comes into play because it had to wait until we were doing some more base damage for its benefit to kick in. But breaking points are starting to appear in the second and fourth place builds. And on the right hand side, when we look at the rankings for four item builds, a breaking point is in all of the top six builds, even for fights lasting only five seconds. And when we get to five item builds, the top build is the same build as when we were doing simulations lasting 12 seconds. Maybe it really is a good build. Hmm, let's check how it works if the enemy is heavily armored. For one or two item builds, the top suggestion is the same as it was in the no armor case. Even for three or four items build, the top suggestion stays the same, even though the damage per second is much lower, of course, because of the armor. And for five items, we're back to the same build again. So, this build is looking like it's standing up to a lot of analysis. But the order in which you purchase the items may need to change, 
now that the top builds en route to five items have changed. So earlier I had suggested this sequence, but putting breaking point first prioritizes long fights. Maybe you don't want to do that, especially early game before your captain has a fountain or crucible to keep you alive through a long fight. So let's rearrange the order. Here's an idea. Tornado Trigger ranks high on both the armored and unarmored lists for five second fights, so let's start with that. And Tornado Trigger and Monocle together are a pair that ranks high on both lists also, so let's go there next. And then adding the breaking point next ranks only a few damage per second away from the top spot on both three item lists, so we'll do that next. And then next, we have no choice. If we add a Tornado Trigger, it gets to be the top spot on both four item lists. Then we get to the full build. Now, you may wonder what that bone saw is really doing there. Can it really be that good? Let's check. For unarmored heroes, no. Bone saw only gives a tiny advantage over filling that slot with another monocle instead. In fact, if you like the predictability of 100% crit, you could choose that monocle build instead and basically be just as good, as long as your enemies aren't building any armor. But if they are, the difference is more substantial, almost a 10% increase over the second place build and a full 20% over swapping bone saw for monocle. So, there's lots of evidence that this is the five item weapon power build to aim for. And here's my recommended order of purchasing the items. Okay, that was a long video. It's time to wrap up. There are lots of other cool things that could be done with this simulator, but this is as far as I've gotten. I don't know how long it'll be until the next video because I have a real life job that will be getting busier in the next few months, but I'll see you all with more VG nerd tips as soon as I can. Let me know if this weapon power build works for you, or if you can poke any holes in this analysis. If you can, that's great. We will all learn something new.